All right, in this reaction, we're going to talk about the mechanism of the Friedel Crafts alkylation reaction. So let's just number or letter our carbons here A, B, C. You see in this reaction, we're going to form a new bond to carbon B, A, B, C. So in this reaction, we're going to form a new bond from the carbon on our aromatic ring on benzene to carbon B. And we are going to lose a hydrogen that is on that carbon. So this alkyl group will be uh, will replace the hydrogen, and this is an example of an EAS reaction. So let's um, work through this mechanism. So here is my initial alkyl halide and I'm drawing in the lone pairs on the bromine. And the first step of the reaction is to generate our E+. Plus. And what happens is the bromine, electrons on the bromine, will attack aluminum. Aluminum is a Lewis acid. It wants to make a new bond. And that's exactly what happens. So here's my new bond from bromine to aluminum. That aluminum is still connected to three carbons. And the bromine had one lone pair become a bond. So therefore, this bromine now has a positive charge and the aluminum has a negative charge. The next step that happens is this carbon-bromine bond breaks. which leaves me with a secondary carbocation and my aluminum species here. So that aluminum still has a negative charge. And what I want to point out here is that that aluminum species is in equilibrium where it can actually lose a halogen and we're going to use this chlorine a little later in the next step of the mechanism. But what I want to focus in is on my carbocation here. This is a secondary carbocation and this is now a very good electrophile. So what happens next is this is our E plus we've generated. One of the pi bonds is now going to attack that carbon So there's our attack step, and let's draw in the intermediate that we form. There's my new bond to carbon B. Remember, there's still a hydrogen there, so let's draw that in. And the consequence of breaking this bond is there now a positive charge there. We still have our other double bonds. And this step is very high in energy. We've gone from a compound that is aromatic to a compound that's not aromatic. But what helps stabilize this reaction is there's some good resonance structures we can draw. So let's draw in those resonance structures here. So I can move this pi bond over there to get a double bond here. Still have my H and my isopropyl. Double bond there and a plus. And I can move these electrons over here to draw my next resonance structure. There's my H and my isopropyl. I now have a plus on this carbon. Double bond here, double bond there. So these are two resonance structures that we can draw that help stabilize this non-aromatic species. But to complete the mechanism, there's one more step. We're now going to take this chlorine here. So if I draw in that Cl minus, sorry, my lone pairs are a little wonky. I can now use these electrons to form a new bond from Cl to H, break the heart carbon hydrogen bond to regenerate my aromaticity. So that will actually get us straight to our product. So it's a pretty straightforward mechanism. 
Again, bromine attacks aluminum to form this species here. We break the carbon bromine bond to generate our carbocation. This is now our electrophile. The aromatic ring will attack the electrophile to form this species. Two resonance structures we can draw. To complete the mechanism, Cl- will abstract the hydrogen to reform my aromatic ring.